Does Joe Quesada hate John Byrne or vice versa? Well, this is one of those feuds that's been going on in comics for a very long time, and it's hard to ascertain the exact truth of who dealt the first blow. But one thing that is for certain, John Byrne and Joe Quesada do not like each other. So let's, let's examine why. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, one of the big mysteries in comics that always comes up is fans will like a certain creator in the past, like a John Byrne, for example, and say things like, uh, you know, why doesn't John Byrne do Marvel work? Or why is Marvel wasting its time with all these other silly artists and not going to John Byrne, who did an amazing She-Hulk, Fantastic Four, X-Men, so many things. John Byrne's um, legend within Marvel and DC is... is is clear. He is a good artist. No matter what people say, no matter how much people in the recent times have thrown shade about John Byrne being a, a poor artist, John Byrne was a good artist. He's drawn some of the most epic, memorable stories of all time. And a lot of the kind of the iconic images of characters, even if Marvel doesn't use John Byrne's art very much anymore, and there's a reason for that we'll get to, um, they still use his character design, his costumes. He defined uh, a generation of characters that still used today. John Byrne is um, instantly recognizable in his art style, and unlike a lot of the other uh, artists that, you know, their style kind of fits for a particular era, John Byrne's art it's for many eras. So what happened? Why did John Byrne fall out of favor with uh, with Marvel and with uh, a number of things? Well, um, first off, I think it's worth saying that whether you like John Byrne or do not like John Byrne, he has a, uh, if you will, you know, colorful reputation within comics. He He's known for being a guy who flies off the handle a bit. And this was always kind of behind the scenes for many, many decades. But then, um, many decades, for at least a decade. You know, it was known from behind the scenes. He was kind of a rough and tumble guy. Uh, Dave Cockrum uh, over in X-Men did not have nice things to say about John Byrne, who took over a lot of the X-Men work from him. Uh, Cockrum said that he was uh, he was a jerk and uh, very dismissive and unpleasant to, to be around and deal with. And this is artist to artist. So you, you might say this is sour grapes of kind of one artist complaining about another who, who took a lot of the work and took a lot of the fame uh, because the X-Men became became known for John Byrne's work over Dave Cockrum's work, even though both were very legitimate artists, uh, did really, really nice things. But for whatever reason, uh, John Byrne became kind of more known for what he did. And uh, and definitely, at least we would hear rumblings behind the scenes that uh, he was not necessarily gracious about it. So in the uh, in the late eighties, I'm thinking late eighties, early nineties, uh, late eighties. Uh, John Byrne uh, heads off to DC and he does Superman. He does a number of things over there. DC makes a very big deal about John Byrne coming over, and that act in and of itself burned some bridges within Marvel. There were some feelings like this very big artist who became very popular, had the red carpet rolled out for him, was able to do whatever he wanted within Marvel, was suddenly uh, abandoned Marvel, goes over to DC, kind of thumbs their, his nose at Marvel at the time, and then proceeds to kind of hit a wall with a lot of politics and other things that DC doesn't fit in there, comes kind of, you know, as Marvel people have told it, slinking back uh, to Marvel in the mid-90s, and he immediately, or late 90s, I suppose, and he relaunches some Spider-Man books with Howard Mackey, and then he also relaunches uh, X-Men The Hidden Years. So X-Men The Hidden Years was, um, by and large, a good book. And I think in, in if you kind of look back on some of the things he did, it actually was filling a pretty, pretty cool need of uh, X-Men stories that were classic. X-Men in general was suffering a little bit. The Hidden Years was telling some pretty awesome stories between the time of X Men, the original series, and X Men, uh, the you know the giant size where Wolverine and Cy uh, Colossus and all those other characters, Storm, came into the picture. So this was an important gap to fill, and John Byrne was doing it pretty admirably. He was putting out some pretty good books, uh, both writing and drawing the series, and it was doing okay. I mean, it wasn't a you know smash hit or anything else, but it was it was decent. It was it was some good storytelling, and I have some fond memories of that run. 
So anyway, uh, Joe Casada uh, replaces Bob Harris as Marvel editor in chief. Um, in he comes, and one of Casada's first acts was to trim the number of X Men titles. Now here's where. We don't know the truth, but there's been at least a lot of speculation in the background that Cosada had it in for John Byrne. Didn't like him, had uh, issues with his personality. I don't, you know, nobody knows. Cosada has denied this and said that that was not the case. He was doing kind of line cleanup, and there were too many X books at the time, which is probably true, and that uh, he was he was trying to strengthen Marvel. And, and granted, Casada did strengthen Marvel coming out of the late 90s. I mean, the, the work he did at the beginning of his run was certainly positive for Marvel's business as a whole. But at the same time, there have been accusations, and I think there's at least some, what, fire to the smoke, smoke to the fire, whatever. There's some truth to this that Casada did not seem to love Burn, or at least uh, there was some kind of... Um, mischief there, if you will. Um, John Byrne, now now if I could take it back a little bit, um, John Byrne had pretty much uh, gone on kind of a tear at the time against Peter David and Jim Shooter and a number of different individuals within comics of being uh, very kind of, you know, jerks and uh, basically, I mean, with Jim Shooter, he uh, made a giant pinata, put a photograph of his face on it and burned it in you know with fire pretending it was jim shooter um john byrne you know a lot of people have made comments about how mark wade has flipped out and done crazy things in front of other people john byrne did a lot of crazy things in front of other people there's there's just no there's no denying that there's plenty of eyewitnesses it's not gossip he did these things now whether he was serious or out of control or crazy or you know nobody knows but at least that was out there um, where Peter David was concerned, um, he would uh, he 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 had weird stories. So John Byrne started accusing Peter David of ruining his stories, and so he said Peter David has Xerox copies of uh, Alpha Flight, and he was running around and handing them out to spoil John Byrne's ending of a storyline. And uh, Peter David says he wasn't at the convention; says Byrne was crazy. Um, again, no one has gotten to the exact truth of this, except a lot of people I know I trust um, have said that, confirmed, it, no, Peter David wasn't at the convention. So this idea that Peter David would be running around. Also, there's a common sense aspect to this. I mean, close your eyes and just, I want you to try and picture a writer, Xerox, somehow getting their hands on, you know, pages before they were printed, Xeroxing them, and then running around a convention handing them out. I mean, if you've been to a convention, it's not like the comic creators have time to just run around handing out pages of, of comics. It's just weird as a, as a statement. Now, could it have happened? Yeah, maybe. I mean, sure. And I, I want to remind everybody at this point, I love John Byrne. His work is incredible. And if right now you said John Byrne was going to come and you know, recreate Lost Years, X-Men, or you know, God help us all. He he could write and draw Fantastic Four, take it away from the dumpster fire of comic that it currently is. I'm all for it. Bring John Byrne in. I'm 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 on, I'm in. I'm buying the comic. I'm in. 100. percent That said, some of John Byrne's claims were crazy. And then John Byrne ran a message board where he, a number of things happened. He get into fights with everybody, and he he made a lot of insults and attacked other creators that, in hindsight, are kind of funny. But at the time, we're not. Like he called um, Brian Michael Bendis like a uh, a great camp counselor who became a crappy writer. I mean, he he just had it in for all kinds of people, and uh, he made jokes about Joe Casada's mom uh, dying, and that you know Casada had to go to Florida because of that, and it just it he made a lot of. And we'll get back to that in a second. So anyway, in Casada comes one of first his first acts is to cancel John Byrne's Lost Years X Men title. Now, again, Lost Years wasn't the top-selling book by any stretch of the imagination, but I will tell you that if Lost Years was in shops in the direct market today, it would be, you know, easily a middle to upper title. So it was not, you know, it was a good book. And if you could have it back today, you would. But it was canceled. It was canceled somewhat unceremoniously. And then, again, none of us were there. But John Byrne at least claims that that book was canceled uh, pretty rudely, that it was kind of uh, shoved out the door and, and, and he was notified in a disgraceful manner and, and just uh, it, was not, it was not done in a classy way. 
Um, and then that gets us back to kind of what I mentioned before. John Byrne then proceeds to start making jokes about Joe Quesada, um, kind of lighthearted jokes, and they got meaner and meaner and ultimately culminated in Byrne making fun of uh, Quesada's mom's death. And that rumor has it got Byrne banned from Marvel. Now, something definitely happened to get Byrne banned from Marvel because even kind of reprints of his art and and a lot of other things, even very obvious moments like Marvel 1000 and other things where clearly John Byrne should do work for Marvel, um, he, he, Marvel still refused to do work with him. I mean, you know, if you're relaunching Fantastic Four and you're hunting around for what's the team to do it on, I mean, yeah, Burn is right there, clearly wanting to do it. The amount of money you'd spend on Burn versus some of these other people, Burn has proven over the years that he can still keep up with the daily page rate and that he's uh, his his work is top class and everything else. However, um, nothing has happened. Um, as in all things in comics, it's hard to say who's the crazy person and who's the nut job. You know, nobody. Fully knows. Now we know of some evidence at least that we've seen Burns message boards and we uh, you know we've seen some comments he makes. One thing you can say about Burn that unfortunately I think you can say about a lot of comic creators is that Burn doesn't hide how he feels. Burn tends to let's put things out there. And by the way, um, some of the people who have, who have vocally criticized John Byrne for being out of control of his emotions and not able to play well with others. One of his biggest critics is um, is Mark Wade and Gail Simone, um, both of which are. I mean, you gotta. Uh, that is hysterical in a sense that both of those two individuals in particular have called out John Byrne for being out of control. Um, I think in comics in general, there's a certain aging process. There's a certain way that people just start to kind of lose their minds over time. <laughs> At least it seems that way, and so. What what is normal at the beginning seems to get crazier and crazier. And, and by the way, new new creators, old creators, everything else. Um, unfortunately, the circle of life in comics seems to be people do a lot of good work and then they go nuts, and then hopefully they don't go nuts in a way that makes people really crazy. Is it uh, you know? It's kind of the scale. Did you go full Alan Moore, or did you just go kind of uh, Mark Miller? Where what kind of what what level of crazy did you go? So. Anyway, that's the story behind John Byrne. Um, does he have a big uh, problem with Marvel? Yeah, I think at this point it's clear he does. Uh, Marvel's had many opportunities to bring him back, to do things with him, and they have not. So uh, if you're Marvel and you've got really obvious, like the light is blinking right in your face, opportunities to bring Byrne back and you don't, well, then you've clearly got a problem with that individual. Um, I hope it gets settled. I think right now, if you were to relaunch, and, and God knows, everybody's listening to this knows I do not like relaunches. If you were to relaunch Fantastic Four with old John Byrne at the helm, I mean, I, please, right now, make my day. That would be the 2020 good news I can rally behind. But um, as far as it looks and everything, it seems bad news. It seems like the Joe Quesada, uh, John Byrne feud is not getting better anytime soon, and I wouldn't expect to see him back at Marvel unfortunately. But that's some of the reasons behind it. So hey, leave me a comment below. Would you hire John Byrne back? If you're in Marvel right now, would you say bygones be bygones? Don't care about the attitude. Let's bring him back. How much do you think the outside comic shenanigans really matter? Would you just try and turn the other cheek, so to speak? Or would you say, nope, banned forever? Where do you sit with all of it? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment below. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch. Ask me questions. But most importantly of all, Thanks for listening.